Cette exposition retrace 50 années de création de l'artiste indienne Nalini Malani. C'est une œuvre profondément engagée qui cherche à nous faire réfléchir sur le monde contemporain à travers l'activation de tous les ressorts de la mémoire, la mémoire qui est un sujet au cœur de son travail. Nalini Malani a recours à toutes sortes de moyens d'expression qui peuvent aller de la reprise de techniques anciennes comme la, la peinture sous verre jusqu'à ce qu'elle appelle des théâtres d'ombre vidéo. Donc c'est un mode d'expression qu'elle a inventé qui sont des environnements immersifs multimédia. Uh, we are at the moment in uh, the room uh, where we are looking at the video shadow play Remembering Mad Meg. Um, this forms the spine of the exhibition. And for me, it was important that Mad Meg would become the spine because uh, Mad Meg is a character from a 16th century Bruegel painting. She appears uh, quite a strange character to the normal human being. She wears an armor, she has a pot over her head, and she is with a little army of people trying to remove the evil of the land. If we take that as the lead motive of the things that I do, uh, to my mind, the, uh, what the woman symbolizes for me is uh, what the future should be speaking about. It's what I call progress. If we listen to the woman's voice, if we listen to the woman's instinct, I think that that is the way we have to go because too much has happened with male patriarchy and now what we are facing is extreme capitalism which is completely denigrating the female voice. L'œuvre de Nalini Malani conjugue à la fois beauté et violence malgré la gravité des thèmes qui sont abordés comme la montée du fondamentalisme ou bien la place euh, et la souffrance des femmes dans la société. Euh, il y a un grand message d'espoir précisément à travers l'idée que c'est la femme qui peut changer le monde, qu'il faudra regarder le monde d'un point de vue féminin, si, comme le dit l'artiste, l'humanité veut survivre au XXIe siècle. In uh, in the work called Unity and Diversity, the installation, or rather what I call the video play, takes place in a middle upper middle class Indian home, and the video appears inside a gilt frame. Um, with pictures of Nehru and Gandhi and that whole period where we realized independence, but also the sadness that cuts the country into two, into Pakistan and India. The video play begins with a painting, again, um, from the 19th century, done by a, a kind of a traditional formalist artist, Raja Ravi Varma and we see 11 women in the different costumes of India. And you can make out from the costumes where they come from, what religion they have, but they play together different instruments in harmony. And the video ends with women carrying guns. Now the whole idea was that the nation, uh, when it was formed in the Nehruvian period, we had, we believed in the slogan, unity and diversity, because it was a diverse country with different religions and finally when um, extremism comes in as we know from other nations as well the accoutrements of the religion are borne by women whether it's the hijab the niqab or the gugat or the bindi or whatever it is it's women who have to wear this now the whole idea of the work was how women were destroyed in a in a violent way during riots of 2002 in the western state of Gujarat. It's almost as if the mothering figure, the, the woman who procreates, is the one who gets destroyed. And that's the starting point, and it leads to other ideas through this work. From 1969, after I finished at the art school, I was very interested in modernism how it was manifest to us in India. The ideal that the individual is the important person, where he comes from, what he eats, drinks, or what his religion is, 
was of no consequence because it was the individual. And therefore, that period of my work has to do with a quest of how I could bring a modernist image into my work. But time changed and things in society changed and it became much more sectarian with different religions exerting themselves. This led to a kind of a disenchantment and also a kind of dystopia. And the earlier work spans that period, 1969 to 1976. This is what um, I was trying to do. Nalini Malani mobilise dans son œuvre des références qui appartiennent à la fois à la culture indienne et à la culture occidentale. La littérature occupe une place centrale dans son œuvre, qu'il s'agisse de poésie ou de théâtre. Et elle revisite souvent les grands mythes pour nous aider à relire d'un autre regard le, le monde contemporain. We are now in the room where we, that I call All We Imagine as Light. The title comes from a poem of Agha Shahid Ali, who was a Kashmiri poet, and he wrote a set of poems called A Country Without a Post Office. Um, we've had a few problems at, in Kashmir, and it was very uh, urgent that I would, would like to make things uh, relating to that or addressing those problems, which have been ongoing for many decades. Now, why do I use poetry and why am I so fascinated with literature and uh, things that are written. It goes back to a period when I studied in France, in Paris, and I always say that Paris was the university of my life. It was post-1968 and still there was a lot of ferment and a lot of intellectual activity. And for me, the writings of Simone de Beauvoir, Jean-Paul Sartre and Michel Lyris were very uh, important. Also, what I studied was about the Indian caste system through a French anthropologist, Louis Dumont. Um, now, what I found with literature and some of the French literature, for example, Proust and Baudelaire, etc., was the kind of intimacy that they were able to create in their works. It was something that I wanted to uh, introduce into my work, but how to do it in a visual form. That was a conundrum that I had to try to solve. Now, coming back to the present time and this work, what I tried to do was what Kashmir and other areas where there is conflict, for example, Syria, um, what is the main emotion, it's that of separation between one's loved ones. And that is the main uh, theme of these works. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, the words that writers use so beautifully um, and the kind of close emotion that they are able to uh, create in the writing, I try to parallel that with, with pictures, with, with, with paintings. Um, and also, uh, it's interesting how the technique that I use, which is an old technique called reverse painting on glass, but because of new materials, we are able to use things like acrylic and Lexan. What you put in first in the painting are the features, how the mouth looks, how the eyes straight out at you look. So that's the first emotion that I have to put down in the reverse painting. And this already gives me the contact. I create a personage, a character, like a writer would create a character and then weave the rest around it. So finally, I have to say that I have a great envy for writers because they are able to, with a very, with a poverty of means, with almost like a pen and a notebook, write the most intimate things and the most um, vast things of the universe. And that has led me to be very inspired by writers. I started to work um, with the text of Heine Müller. I discovered yet another kind of language because he uses a classical language and he uses the slang of the street. And he's able to meld these two in the most fantastic way. As well as Hamlet Machine, 
have that quality, and I've used other texts as well from the mission, etc. Now, Hamlet Machine came at the moment when India was not quite sure which way it wanted to turn, whether it wanted to remain a socialist country or go into globalization, capitalism, and then, you know, raw capitalism as we see from the United States. At that moment, it was vacillating which way, and therefore, Hamlet Machine came at that moment in the year 2000. When I realized that finally my work was totally confined to the white cube, I wasn't able to connect with people. And it was getting more and more elitist. Then I decided that I have to make environments where others from other sectors of society could also partake of what my quest was that a subject is vast, and one work is not enough to contain that subject. So if it is the woman's voice, if it is through Cassandra, the myth of Cassandra, or the myth of Medea, and from the Indian side, Sita, these are vast subjects. They have come to us through eons of time, and they have universal truths in them, which we try to open up into the contemporary realm. So in order to try to move into that, I keep keying in different ideas of material. The moving in the image is something that is in their daily lives, in the television, for example, or in the films. And then to make an extra immersive moment, the extension was into sound. And that became a totally um, audio, visual, immersive, uh, environment and therefore the quest for different materials. Therefore also the, uh, the what you see in the wall drawing. You know, to connect with public, to connect with people.